Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about another real case study of the gel electrophoresis running and here is a question why is my plasmid smaller than what I expect after plasmid extraction and specifically here is the gel electrophoresis of my plasmid after kit extraction I expected a size around 6500 base pairs but I think I have got a smaller band what is your opinion about this issue? So take a look. We are talking about this band here. And here is the ladder. Here is the sizes. So it is roughly 5 kilobases instead of being 6000. So let me highlight here. 6500 base pairs. So as you see it is smaller than expected. The gel is running from this side to this side and those bands which are heavier they would travel smaller distance. We expect a band to be somewhere here but as you see instead we have it here. So what happened? Actually we have here two bands. One band here another more bright band here. So instead of one band we have two bands but of the different size one seems smaller so it traveled longer distance than expected. Another one seems like bigger so it traveled smaller distance than expected. What we see here we can explain with this picture. On this picture we can see plasmid in different conformation that also would travel from this side to this side and would form bands at the different places because conformation of this molecule, circular molecule, it also can be linear, affect how fast it moves through the gel. So first nicked plasmid. So plasmid it is a circular DNA but if it is going to be nicked, so let me show you double stranded DNA. But if one strand would be nicked, so as you see it is nicked here, then it's going to be in its relaxed form. And it's going to be slowest to move. What if two strands of the DNA would be cut with say restriction enzyme? Then we are going to get linear form of this circular DNA or plasmid and it's going to be next slow to move. So it would form this band and by the way the ladder here is given for linear form of the plasmid for 6500 base pairs. In this case if our DNA would be linear this is where we expect this band to be. But as you see instead we have two bands. One which moves slower than expected. Another one which moves faster than expected. Again let's take a look at our diagram. And as you see next conformation would be super coiled conformation which moves as you see faster than linear form. Take a look at this conformation it's going to look something like this. Of course this is not single stranded, it's double stranded. It's hard for me to draw it. But you can imagine that it should look something like this, even much more compact. That's explain why this shape move uh, more freely through the gel. We can say that this conformation would expect least molecular friction. And the last variant that we have left would be the band formed by circular single stranded DNA. As you see it moves faster than the rest. So travel longer distance. So it's going to look something like this. It's not going to be uh, in the form of the uh, super coiled because it is single stranded. In order to be super coiled it only can happen with uh, double stranded DNA. 
but it also can make different conformations because it can be self-complementary and also may take different shapes. So here I am just showing uh, hydrogen bonding of the complementary, uh, self-complementary regions. But you also should understand that single-stranded plasmids are very rare. So we should consider these three forms or conformations. As you see, we are missing a band which stands for the linear conformation of the plasmid, but we have this dim band which travels at smaller distance than expected. So this band stands for the nicked variant of this double-stranded relaxed form of the plasmid. And this bright band which traveled faster through the gel, as you see, than expected, would be our supercoiled form or conformation of the plasmid. If we would compare these two bands, we would see that this band is much brighter. That means that we have much more this conformation of the plasmid than this one. We have much more supercoiled conformation than nicked one and we don't have linear form and this is expected because when we extract plasmid, if we don't treat it with restriction enzyme which cuts through the both strands in the same place, we are going to see only whether this conformation or this. Usually plasmids are found in this conformation but when they are actively transcribed then topoisomerases would nick one strand of the DNA in order to relax it for other enzymes which participate in replication or expression of the genes would have easier access. So in vivo we expect a few of these variants which uh, we see here and more of this conformation and as you see by the brightness of this band this is exactly what we see and actually linear form we are not expect to see at all unless we essentially cut double stranded DNA with restriction enzymes or they were cut due to contamination. Thus I have to admit that in nature linear form of plasmids also exist. Anyway, now I hope if you ever would run a gel with plasmid extract, you would be able to interpret it. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.